According to the WHO's guidelines on the international packaging and shipping of vaccines, a 10-day electronic temperature monitoring device should be included in each international vaccine shipping carton. 10-day electronic temperature monitoring devices show when and to what extent the set temperature conditions have been violated. This video gives a step-by-step -step demonstration of QTAG 2 Plus temperature monitor. There are two types of devices. The Type 1 device is attached to a yellow backing card and is designed to accompany the DTP, DT, TT, DT, Hepatitis B, IPV, Liquid HIB and combination vaccines. The Type 2 device is attached to a blue backing card and is designed to accompany the OPV and freeze-dried BCG, measles, MR, MMR, lyophilized HIV, yellow fever and meningitis vaccines. Each device has a unique barcode. A twin label of this unique barcode sticker should come from the vaccine manufacturer along with a list indicating which device has been put into which box. There are three alarm conditions set for the devices. Since type 1 devices are for freeze-sensitive vaccines and type 2 devices are for OPV and freeze-dried vaccines, the alarm settings for these two types are different. In type 1, the 45 degrees Celsius alarm is a single alarm for one hour or more. This alarm is only activated if the package is exposed to temperatures over 45 degrees Celsius for at least one hour continuously. The 30 degrees Celsius alarm is activated when temperatures are above 30 degrees Celsius for at least 10 hours cumulatively. The minus 0.5 degrees Celsius alarm is a single alarm and is activated when exposure to temperatures lower than minus 0.5 degrees Celsius occurs for more than one hour. This exposure has to happen continuously for the alarm to be triggered. In type 2, the 45 degrees Celsius alarm is a single alarm for one hour or more. This alarm is only activated if the package is exposed to temperatures over 45 degrees Celsius for at least one hour continuously. The 30 degrees Celsius alarm is activated when temperatures are above 30 degrees Celsius for at least 10 hours cumulatively. The third alarm is the 10 degrees Celsius alarm that is set to be triggered if exposed to temperatures higher than 10 degrees Celsius for at least 20 hours cumulatively. When you receive an international vaccine shipment, you must open all the cartons one by one to remove the devices. When you remove the QTAG 2 Plus from the carton, you will see the run signal flashing on the bottom right corner of the screen, which means that the device is in active recording mode. In order to stop the device, you have to press the stop button for three seconds. The run sign will disappear from the bottom right corner of the screen and the stop sign will appear on the bottom left corner of the screen. The device is now stopped and will not record anymore. If everything is okay with the shipment and no violation has occurred, 
the OK sign will be seen in the middle of the screen. For every 10 hours of the journey, one dark segment will be highlighted. In this example here, you can count a total of 12 dark segments. This means that the journey was at least 120 hours. The precise total elapsed transit time of 127 hours and 41 minutes is displayed in the middle of the screen under the OK sign. If any of the set temperature limits are violated, an alarm indicator will be seen in the middle of the screen under the total elapsed transport time. In this example, you will see a total of eight dark segments with an indication in the middle that the total elapsed transit time is 86 hours and 27 minutes. In alarm screens, you will see additional features which explain when these alarms have occurred and the type of violations committed. This screen shows two alarms. The first alarm is indicated with an additional arrow next to the second dark segment pointing to the middle. This means that this alarm has happened during the second 10-hour duration of the journey. The limit indicators on the left side of the screen pointing to the alarm types indicate the type of alarms. The very first alarm is shown with a limit indicator that is at the very left side of the screen under the first alarm sign. In this example, the first alarm was a minus 0.5 degrees Celsius alarm for at least a one hour continuous exposure. The second alarm has happened during the seventh 10 hour period of the journey, indicated with an additional arrow next to seventh dark segment and pointing to the middle. The type of this second alarm is shown with a limit indicator that is indented under the next sign pointing 30 degrees Celsius for at least 10 hours cumulatively. If there is a third alarm, this will be shown under the next sign. In this case, from the screen, it will not be possible to tell which one is the second and which one is the third alarm. Details will only be possible to see in the history mode. If there are any alarms, you must write down the date and local time you stopped the device on the backing card. This is important when you refer to the device after you have stopped it. It will help you to calculate the precise time of the violation. All stored data can be retrieved up to six months after stopping the QTAG 2 Plus. In order to read the details of a temperature history during the transit time, you must set the device into history mode. To do this, you must first press the start button firmly and simultaneously press the stop button for one second and then release both buttons. As soon as the history mode is activated, the first time segment and the max sign start flashing. Additionally, a temperature is displayed in the middle of the screen. This is the highest recorded temperature during the first time segment for the first 10 hours of the journey. In this example, you will see that the highest temperature recorded during the first 10 hours is 4.3 degrees Celsius. 
To continue reading the history, you must press the Start button again. This time, the first segment will continue flashing. In addition, the Min sign will start flashing. The temperature that is displayed in the middle indicates the minimum temperature recorded during the first time segment for the first 10 hours of the journey. In this example, you will see that the lowest temperature recorded during the first 10 hours is minus 0.2 degrees Celsius. When you press the Start button again, this time both the Max and Min signs will start flashing. The temperature displayed in the middle indicates the average temperature recorded during the first 10 hours of the journey. In this example, you will see that the average temperature recorded during the first 10 hours is 2.4 degrees Celsius. By pressing the Start button, you will move to the next segment. Each pressing of the Start button will take you through maximum, minimum, and average temperature recordings of that particular time segment. In this example, the second time segment and the max sign start flashing. You can see that during the second 10 hours of the journey, the maximum recorded temperature was 2.7 degrees Celsius. And the minimum temperature was minus 4.2 degrees Celsius. With an average temperature of 1.2 degrees Celsius. If there is an alarm in the time segment, when you press the start button again, a time indicator along with the alarm sign will appear in the center of the screen. In addition, the limit indicator will appear, pointing to the type of alarm setting that is violated. In this example, you can see that minus 0.5 degrees Celsius exposure for at least one hour was violated and this had happened exactly at 11 hours and 20 minutes after the start of the recording of the device. In the alarm screen, the next pressing of the Start button gives the lowest or highest temperature recorded during the violation, depending on the type of alarm. In this example, you will see that the lowest temperature recorded during the violation was minus 4.2 degrees Celsius. Continuous pressing of the Start button will give details of temperature history in consecutive time segments. Let's see the details of the second alarm. When we reach this time segment, we will see these details. During the seventh 10 hour of the journey, the maximum temperature was 33.6 degrees Celsius. The minimum was 28.4 degrees Celsius and the average was 29.2 degrees Celsius. The 30 degrees violation for at least 10 cumulative hours has happened at 67 hours and 32 minutes after the start of the recording of the device. The highest recorded temperature during this 10-hour cumulative time period, spread over 67 hours and 32 minutes, was 34.7 degrees Celsius. The history mode also works with OK indicated shipments. Let's see this in an OK status device. During the first 10 hours, the highest temperature was 20.7 degrees Celsius. The lowest 
20.2 degrees Celsius. With an average of 20.4 degrees Celsius. During the history mode, if you do not press the start button for more than one minute, the device returns back to the stop screen. QTAG 2 Plus has an additional feature that is called Test Mode, which can be used either prior to starting or after stopping the device, but not during active measurement. This mode is for seeing if the device is functioning properly. The test mode is activated by firstly pressing and holding the stop button, then simultaneously pressing start, and then releasing both buttons. The display shows 10 times alternately all display segments and the current ambient temperature. The test mode confirms that the device is working properly. The QTAG 2 Plus device automatically falls back to its prior operating mode after the 10th test cycle. The end of the battery life is indicated by the expiry date printed on the backing card. The accuracy and proper function of the device cannot be assured beyond this expiry date. If there are any alarms, you should refer to the decision table above the expiry date on the back side of the card in order to take correct action. If there are any alarms, do not forget to make a photocopy or scan the device along with its backing card for documentation. Thank you.